And he said unto Abraham, Know of a surety that thy seed shall be a stranger in a land that is not theirs, and they shall serve them, and they shall afflict them four hundred years. And also that nation whom they shall serve will I judge, and afterwards shall they come out with great substance. For as the lightning cometh out of the east, and shineth even unto the west, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. In 1930, a man came from the east, the holy city of Mecca, Arabia. He introduced himself as Wallace D. Fadid in Detroit, Michigan, and began teaching the rejected and despised black man and woman of America. Black people in America were in the worst condition imaginable. They were taught their blackness was a curse and that they were doomed to be hewers of wood and drawers of water. Wallace D. Fadid came to destroy those lies and bring the light of truth. He taught them to love themselves and the supreme knowledge of self. He taught that God dwells within man and according to the degree of man's submission to do God's will, determines the degree of manifestation of his presence within. I have said, ye are all gods, and all are children of the Most High. He revealed to them their hidden history of not only being kings and queens, but how they once ruled as gods. He began to lead them onto a path of a new spiritual culture and civilization. In 1931, Wallace D. Fodden was preaching this great truth of salvation when he met a poor, humble man by the name of Elijah Poole. He renamed him Elijah Muhammad and chose him to be his divine representative. For three and one half years, Wallace D. Fodden taught and trained Elijah Muhammad night and day. He raised his student to understand the profound wisdoms of the reality of God. This included knowledge of the universal order of things and the creation of life from the beginning of time. The most honorable Elijah Muhammad knew that Wallace D. Farad was no ordinary man. He identified this unequaled human being as the one that the world has been expecting for the past 2,000 years. The one we have all looked for under the names of Messiah, the second coming of Jesus, the Christ, Jehovah, God and the Son of Man. When Elijah Muhammad asked him to identify himself, he replied, I am the Mahdi. In 1933, he officially signed his name as W.F. Muhammad, which means Wallace Fadid Muhammad. This name expresses the meaning of one who had come in the early morning dawn of the new millennium to lay the base for a new world order of peace and righteousness. These twelve Jesus sent forth and commanded them, saying, Go not into the way of the Gentiles, and into any city of the Samaritans enter ye not, but go rather to the house of Israel. As Jesus instructed his disciples to first teach only the house of Israel, Master Fadid Muhammad instructed his messenger, Elijah Muhammad, to first teach the black man and woman of America. He knew that it would be impossible for them to love others without first loving themselves. Elijah Muhammad knew he would be misunderstood and persecuted, but he courageously accepted the mission 
he was born for. You're an independent people. You don't need to go nowhere but to yourself. Yes, sir. After being in America, the heart of the earth, for three years as it was written of him, Master Farad Muhammad told Elijah Muhammad that it was time for him to leave. Elijah Muhammad was ready. What about you, brother? How do you feel about the Honorable Elijah Muhammad? Uncle Elijah Muhammad is trying to teach all our original people they are in bad shape. Yeah, go ahead, brother. Uncle Elijah Muhammad trying to wake them up. Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. As the Bible predicted, Elijah Muhammad was sent to the world as a messenger of God. He was not self-taught or self-made, but one mighty in power had taught him what he knew not. The most honorable Elijah Muhammad never received more than a fourth grade education, yet his supreme knowledge and wisdom confounded the scholars of the world. He raised a powerful nation out of these once slaves. For 44 years, he taught freedom, justice, and equality as he extended this Islamic movement to every city in America and settlements throughout the world. His teachings of economic development, combined with moral and spiritual renewal, reformed the black community. The establishment of farms, schools, a bank, and grocery stores showed signs of progress. This list also included international fish imports, a national trucking company, an aviation department, and many other successful businesses throughout the country and abroad. It is said that you can measure the wisdom of a teacher through the works of their students. Under the leadership of Elijah Muhammad, world leaders and icons were produced. His son, Warath Dean Muhammad, became one of the greatest Islamic scholars known throughout the world. He bridged the gap between the broader Muslim community and the Christian church. His notable endeavors played a significant role in the growth of all. Islam in America. In the words of Mr. Farrar, I can sit on top of the world and tell anyone that the most beautiful nation is in the wilderness of North America. Muhammad Ali, known as the greatest boxer of all time. It wasn't just his charismatic charm and outspokenness, but his desire to make a righteous stand for humanity, proclaiming him the people's champ. But when one man of popularity can let the world know the problem, he, can, uh, he might lose a few dollars himself telling the truth, might lose his life, but he's helping millions. But if I kept my mouth shut just because I can make millions, I just love the freedom and the flesh and blood of my people more so than I do the money. He stunned the world when he refused to join the military and fight in the Vietnam War due to his religious beliefs. Because of this, he was stripped of his title and threatened to be imprisoned. Ali held on to his faith. And finally, after a seemingly endless battle with the Supreme Court, he regained his world title. Muhammad Ali will always be known as the greatest. Malcolm X, born Malcolm Little, a young man of destiny, heard the teachings of the most honorable Elijah Muhammad while incarcerated. Malcolm immersed himself into the teachings and it transformed his life. He later became the minister of the New York Mosque and the national spokesperson for the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. With only an eighth grade education and armed with knowledge gained from his teacher, he debated and defeated scholars from Harvard, Oxford, and other top institutes in the That's world. Right. That's if right. a Chinese person were to say his name was Patrick Murphy, uh, you would look at him like he's insane because uh, Murphy is a name that uh, has a Caucasian or, or a white background. Uh, I think it would be just as improper for a black person or the so-called Negro in this country as we're taught by the Honorable Elijah Muhammad to walk around with these names and therefore he teaches us that during slavery the same slave master who owned us uh, put his last name on us to denote that we were his property. Malcolm X, a polarizing figure displaying the struggle towards humanity and redemption, 
through his journey in life. He will always be remembered as one of the most brilliant black leaders of all time. In the 44 years the Honorable Elijah Muhammad was among us, he chose one national representative, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. In 1955, Louis Farrakhan joined the Nation of Islam. Once a popular musician, he gave up a life of fame and fortune for a life he himself could not even fathom. Over six decades later, Minister Louis Farrakhan reflects on making his word bond by continuing to share the teachings as a student of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. Knowing from the inception that the world would benefit from the wisdom of Master Farad Muhammad, Elijah Muhammad prepared his student to imbue the universal aspect of his teachings to benefit the entire human family. And he said unto them, Go ye into the world, and preach the gospel to every creature. The Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan has fulfilled his divine inevitability, sharing the word of God, reaching untold numbers throughout the world. The Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad said that the nation of Islam would one day fall, only to rise and never fall again. After Elijah Muhammad's departure, Minister Farrakhan began rebuilding the works of his beloved teacher in the late 70s. In the 80s, he inspired the rebirth of a nation before countless crowds bearing witness to the truth of his teacher. His love for humanity and the desire to dispel the notion that black men were non-redeemable gave prominence to the Stop the Killing tour in the early 90s. With an extraordinary act of faith, Minister Farrakhan called a million black men to Washington, D.C. Monday, October 16th, 1995, a day that time stood still. Nearly two million men were the hopes, the desires, and the fulfillment of a people yearning to atone and become one with God. Till this day, the Million Man March remains one of the largest gatherings in the annals of world history. After the Million Man March, a spiritual revelation inspired Minister Farrakhan to begin his next endeavor. He increased an already extraordinary pace as he was welcomed all over the world by kings and rulers as a head of state on the World Friendship Tour. Nations opened their doors to the minister as he circled the globe, making friends for black America. Today, Minister Farrakhan continues to spread the teachings of freedom, justice, and equality. His body of work has proven him to be a divine leader, teacher, and guide. The Nation of Islam is comprised of a group of individuals who, when touched by the Word of God, forge a bond of brother and sisterhood. The men, known as the FOI, or Fruit of Islam, are constantly training and conditioning themselves to meet and overcome all obstacles in their path. To do this, the FOI are compelled to be honest, humble, obedient, tolerant, courteous, dependable, and militant. The Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad taught that a nation can rise no higher than its woman. We must honor, respect, and protect our women. The MGT and GCC is the name given to the training of the women and girls in North America. It stands for Muslim Girls Training and General Civilization Class. The Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad's desire was to produce a very high level of civilization coming through a reformed woman. He taught us, when you teach a man, you teach an individual. But when you teach a woman, you teach a nation. We're your teachers, doctors, lawyers, your everyday people. No matter who we are individually, we all have one common goal 
and that's to deliver this message of truth to the world. The Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad's words from the Muslim program. We want justice, equal justice under the law. We want justice applied equally to all regardless of creed, class, or color. He further states, as the foundation of our nation, we believe that Allah, God, appeared in the person of Master W. Farad Muhammad, July 1930, the long-awaited Messiah of the Christians and the Mahdi of the Muslims. We believe further and lastly that Allah is God, and besides Him, there is no God, and He will bring about a universal government of peace wherein we all can live in peace together. Welcome to your Nation of Islam. Never fall again. Never.